many blessed folks are in the house? Oh, come on. We can do a little better than that. How many blessed folks are in the house? In the house, in the house, in the house. Come on. Yes, amen. God is so good. We got so much to be thankful for that, oh, my God, I, I couldn't just stop praising his name. Hallelujah. Father, tonight, Lord God, we come into this house, oh God, to magnify you, oh God, to praise your holy name, oh God, to thank you for all the good you've done in our lives, oh God, for all the blessings, oh God, for Lord God, you just pouring out, Lord God, unto us, Lord God, even when we didn't even deserve it, oh God. While we were in a straight mess in our lives, Lord God, you decided to carry us, Lord God, to see us through, Lord God. When we were in our most dire moments, oh God, you decided to bend over and catch us just before we hit the ground, oh God. I just thank you, Lord God, that I could serve a king like you, oh God, that I can worship you, oh God, in the name of Jesus tonight, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, for the pastors, Lord God, for our senior pastor, Pastor Tony Samuels, and his beautiful wife, the first lady, Lord God. I speak the blessing over his life, over his wife, over his children. I pray healing right now. The healing balm of Gilead will just fall right now afresh in their home, oh God. I pray, hallelujah, that you would do a quick work, oh God, and that, Lord God, you would just let them keep walking out, Lord God. What you've been doing for 18 years, Lord God, you can do in 18 seconds, oh God. And I believe that, Lord God, he's getting ready to embark, Lord God, on a mission that's going to be the greatest mission of all, Lord God. I believe that you calling him to the great and the mighty, oh God. I believe that, Lord God, he's not going to have to look to the left, to the right, or anywhere, Lord God, because you are going to bless him, Lord God. You're going to bless the family, Lord God. You're going to bless your leadership, oh God. Oh, Heavenly Father, I thank you for each and every person that labors in this house, oh God. And I thank you, Lord God, that you bless them, that, Lord God, that you would cover them, oh God, with the blood that you shed in Calvary, oh God, and that you would take that blood, Lord God, and you would wash the windows of their world, Lord God, and they would be set free tonight, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Father, as I bring forth this word, I ask you, Lord God, let me be a cocoon tonight, Lord God. Remove me out of the equation, oh God. I ask you, Lord God, to live and move and have your being tonight, Lord God. I pray that, Lord God, that you would write whatever it is you have to write on the tabernacle of someone's heart tonight, Lord God, that someone would be able to leave change, Lord God, by the power, Lord God, by the resurrection power, Lord God, by the authority, Lord God, that you're releasing in this house, oh God. I thank you for Pastor Ralph and Diane, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that you're blessing them and you're keeping them and you're multiplying them and you're giving them more days, Lord God. And I just thank you, Lord God, hallelujah, that they listen to your still small voice, oh God, and that now 58, 59 years later, Lord God, here they are, Lord God, wanting to see, Lord God, your hand move in Riverview, Florida, oh God. And I speak, Lord God, a blessing over their lives, oh God, that you will meet every need, oh God, that they will be blessed, Lord God, pressed down, shaken together, and running over into their lives, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus and the people of God said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. I'm not going to be before you long tonight because I was only given about, what was it again, Pastor? Like about two hours and 26 minutes or something like that? Or, all right, well, you know, so I'm going to try to do my best, all right, guys? In the little few minutes I got, I'm going to try to bring it on for you, okay? Tonight I want to speak a little bit about changing your perspective. 
it's time that you start to see things a little differently. It's time that you start seeing yourself as blessed. How many blessed folk are there in the house? You see, you may have some situations in your life. You may have had some storms in your life come in. But I'm going to tell you that here you are tonight. You know what? The devil could not take you out. And here you are as a result of being a child of the Most High God. Can anybody say amen to that? Amen. Hallelujah. Let me ask you a question. How many people, before I even get started, how many want a mick blessing tonight? A mick blessing? No, 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 no. Let me go to this side. How many want the blessing tonight? Come on, you can do better than that. Hold it, hold it. I'm going to go over here. Let me just find it because there's, a, there's, there's something going on here. Hey, guys, how many want the blessing tonight? Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, let's go all together, right, on the count of three. One, two, three. How many want the blessing? Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. You just shook the heavenlies right now. Woo. Hallelujah. I think we could close right there, Pastor. I don't think there's any more to say right there. I think right there, that said it all. Everybody wants the blessing. Everybody knows the blesser. Everybody knows the pastors and God is doing something in the house. I mean, you know what? If you're connected to a blessing, when you're connected to the power source, hallelujah, there's nothing else you need. Because you know what? You're able to empower yourself to get over whatever it is that you're going through in your life. There's no weapon formed against you that can prosper when you're connected to the source. Anybody say amen to that? Amen. Okay. For people that have been in college here, I want to ask a quick question. Have you ever audited a course? Anybody here knows what it is to audit a course in college? What does it mean, sis? Hallelujah, she hit it right on the head. Everything that I wanted to say was said right there, so I closed and we could go home. <laughs> Listen, when you audit a course, what, you, what I want you to know, that what you're asking for is for you to get information without having to take no responsibility over it. No responsibility I could actually tell you when you get audited for a class, I mean, when you audit for a class, you get no accreditation for the class. You know why? Because if there's no work, there's no reward. If there's no work, there's no reward. And you, I want you to know tonight that you can't audit a Christian. You hear me what I'm saying? You cannot function in the kingdom of God and try to audit a life as a Christian. You know why? Because that's the kind of people that just come, not because of the responsibility, they just come because they just want to be part of something. But you know what? What I've noticed from a lot of people that just want to be part of something is that Pastor Ralph, since they don't get involved in anything, since they want no responsibility over anything, they don't want to do no homework, they don't want to get involved in whatever God is doing in the house and the moving in the house, and they don't understand that when you connect to the blessing, you're bound to be blessed. Okay? So, moving right along, hallelujah, no homework, no exam, no work. Okay? When you order the Christian's life, you might be inspired by the word. You may even have acted out the word. You may have even been inspired by the word, but you still have no change in your life because you decided to audit your walk. You know what that means? You can come to church, you can do the dance, you can praise God. You can give your offering and go back home 
just the same way that you came. And you know what? When you get around another Christian that hasn't been audited, that is just learning about Christ, that may not know as much as you because you're an informational person, you're a person that takes the word and devours the word and you stand in the word and you're inspired by the word, but you're not moved to do anything in the kingdom, you know what they do? They get in a conversation with you purposely just so that they can make you look bad. Just so that they can make you look bad. Because they know the word and they, 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 they have more knowledge and more understanding. Some people, it takes a little longer than others to understand exactly what God is pouring out in that dispensation or in that season. So don't get touched by them. Don't get bothered by them, I come to tell you. See, you can go from information to impartation, but you know what's the bad thing? If you have no transformation, you ain't going nowhere. I hate to tell you, you could go from information to impartation, but if there's no transformation in your life, Lewis, do you think you would be here right now, being in the position you are right now? Do you think anyone in this building would be where you are in life today if there was no transformation? There has to be that resurrection power that transforms your life forever has to come upon you. It's something that's a given when you work for the kingdom of God. You work, you work, you work, you work, and you work. And you know what? As you keep working, the reward keeps coming. Listen to me. I don't care what the situation may look like. Maybe you need to take a different approach at whatever is going on in your life. But I want to tell you, if you haven't been impacted in some way from the labor that you've put out in the kingdom, it means that you're missing out on something in your prayer, in your walk, in your talk, and in your time that you spend with God. Because God is a rewarder of what? Of those who what? Diligent. Who diligent, that diligent, 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 that diligently seek him. He rewards you for that. There's no way you could be serving a God like the God that we have in our lives and not be abounding every day in your life. Every day should be a better day. Every day should be a better day. Every day should be a better day. Every day you should be speaking life over your life. Every day you should be speaking life over your life. Every day you need to choose. What did Pastor Tony say so many times to you guys? You know what he says? In the morning, choose ye who you will serve. Choose ye. Listen, you got a choice when you wake up in the morning. You want to be stressed or you want to be blessed. What is, it, what is your choice? It's your choice. You think that the Lord decides to give you a stressful day? Does anyone here think that God decides to stress you out for the day? No, I don't want you to walk around in life thinking that that's what happens because People that are just learning about Christ blame him for everything that goes wrong. And that's a lot of the Christians that we spoke about in the morning, that they're orderly Christians. They're Christians that don't get involved. And there's some Christians that know the word a lot. Then there's some Christians that don't know the word at all. So be careful. Be careful. Be real careful. Moving on. I was looking at a little thing found in Revelation 3, 7. Did you want to put it up, my brother? It's actually 3, 7 through 13. But I'm just going to say one of the scriptures for right this moment. And then maybe we can move on to whatever because it's just so much and I'm trying to do it within two hours and 26 minutes. So it says, and to the angel of the church... In Philadelphia, I, right. Huh? Oh, 
it writes, these things says he that is holy, he that is true, he that have the key of David, he that have openeth, and no man can shutteth, and shutteth where no man can open. All right, I want to stop right there. Because years ago, I've been in this church for going on nine or ten years by now. I done forgot. I got getting a little old, so I'm getting a little forgetful. Don't mind me. Bishop saw some qualities in me and my wife. And in the qualities of what he's seen in my wife, he said, I can see that I can trust you two guys. So you know what Bishop and Pastor Tony decided to do? They gave me keys to everything in this church many years ago. I got keys to open up just about every lock in the, in the church. And the reason why I say that is because in this church that I'm talking about in Philippi, uh, in Philadelphia, excuse me, God said, I want to speak through the man of God. So he decided to give the man a word to bring to his people. Another description he gave of himself was, I'm not even going to get into the word yet. I may get into it in a few minutes because there's a lot to say and it'll all come together at the end. Another description that he gave about this church was that he was the one that was building the house. Why? It's because he was, he's holy and he's true and he's set apart for such a time as this. Holy means to be put in a class that is not with anything else. And I started to think about it. And I started to think about something real simple to try to figure out what he meant about the different classes, you know, that he's talking about. And I started to think about, let me think of something real simple. So I decided to think about dishes. I decided there's three places I put my dishes. I put my dishes in the sink when they're dirty so that they could get washed. And then once they're washed, I take my dishes and I put them in the cabinets and I put them away. But I also have a third place where I take my dishes and I put them away. Now, those dishes that I put away in the third place are dishes that are really dear to my heart. They're dishes that are precious to me. They're dishes that I don't want them to get cracked and chipped and, 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 and damaged. And I don't want them to be thrown around and I don't want them to be tossed. And I, don't, I just don't want nothing to happen to them because... It's been years of me and my wife putting them away. And then there's certain meals that she'll cook that we'll eat just in those dishes. Isn't that right? So I come to tell you it's the same in the kingdom of God. In the kingdom of God, God wants you to understand that he's such a holy God that you can't decide to put him in a room with just anybody. You hear me? He doesn't want to be put in a place where he doesn't belong. So that means be careful where you go, where you hang out, where you take him to with you. Okay, anybody can say amen to that? Amen. Have we all gone some places that maybe we shouldn't have gone? Do you think there were maybe some consequences of taking him to those places? I got to say yes. All right. There's been times in your life when there were people put over you, like my boss. My boss was placed in my life to be the iron that sharpens iron. You hear me? To be the iron that sharpens iron. All right? My boss thinks because he's the boss and he has the keys to just about every lock in the business where I work at, his keys open up just about everything in the store, that that gives him the authority 
to speak to people whatever way they want, whatever way he wants. Excuse me. I come to tell you that I serve a daddy that has a key. All right? He has a key, and that key is a master key. You know what happens when you have a master key? You know what a master key does? You know what the word of God says about a master key? A master key gives you access and it gives you authority. When you have a master key, you are able to walk through any door that you want to walk through and you're not going to have to worry about how you're going to go about doing it because the one that you serve has a key that can open every door in your life. Can anybody say amen to that? Amen. Anybody believe that? Amen. amen. They call me Perry Mason sometimes, guys, so don't mind me, all right? See, he says, I'm not just a good God. I'm a holy God. I'm holy. I'm in a class that's all by myself. There's nobody holier than thou. He is the man, all right? He is the one and only. The only one that you should be serving, the only one that you need to seek in your life. If you're going through something in your life, who is it that you seek? Who is it that you seek? Huh? Who is it that you seek? God. Okay, all right. Because I'm building a little case here, and I want to be sure that we're all on the same place. He says, I'm just, and he says, I'm holy. That's what the Word of God says, and I love that. See, in Isaiah, around the 40th chapter and around verse 25, the Bible says, God is holy. And what we need to understand about what he, when he said God is holy when Jesus declares to be holy, he declares to be God. Did you hear me? When he declared to say, when Jesus said, I am holy, you know what? He is the second head of the Trinity, okay? And when he made that decision to say, I am holy, he's decided that he is God. He is the Godhead. He is the one that is to represent the kingdom of God. The Father has given him full access to everything in the kingdom. That's what that means. All right? I am the truth, the way, and the life. I am holy and true, says the Lord. He also says, I am the key of David. You hear that? He says, I am the key of David in Isaiah 22, 15 through 25. But because of time, if Pastor Tony don't want to give me more than two hours and 26 minutes, I'll let you go there, okay? What is he speaking about the key of, uh, I mean, having the key of David? You know what is having the key of David? It's just like the stewards that worked in the house at that time. There was a steward that was put over the house, that was supposed to be running things the way God wanted them to be run, and wasn't able to perform the way it needed to be performed, and he was taken out of his duty, okay, and then replaced with another steward, which was given the, key, the keys to the kingdom. And his name was Eliakim. If you want to look it up, Eliakim was his name. And he was given the keys over the kingdom, and, and the Lord says, but remember, I hold the key of the kingdom, a single key, a master key. You know what that means? That even though I've given you authority, even though I've given you access in your life, I want you to understand that I have a key that supersedes all keys. Let me explain to you a little bit about that. How many here have ever had a safe deposit box? Anybody in the house? The few that know about safe deposit boxes know 
that when they go to the bank, they have to go and see someone that had the key. Okay? Now, what they do with that key is they just like what Jesus says. This is the master key to that box. But now, I give you a key when you rent that box so that you could take all your fortune and put it into that box. And every time that you go to access that box, you come to me, I take my key and I put it in, you take your key and you put it in, we both turn the key, and if the key is right, it will open the lock. And now you're able to access all of what you had put into the box, okay? So, moving right along as I'm building my case. Jesus says, I have the single key that will open everything. When you possess a master key, I told you what it'll do for you. The Bible says about the key is that it speaks about access and authority, like something that I told you a little earlier, right? My story tonight about Bishop, I told you about my keys. I said, Jesus claims access over every door and authority over every door. There's every door that has ever been shut in your life when you was going through your mess, when you was going through your most stressful moments, you know what? Jesus can just take the key out, open that door, and give you access once again to the places that you were locked out of. Can anybody say amen to that? Amen. All right. So, building right along. Sorry, I don't do it like Pastor Tony, you know. I'm not superseded, so don't mind me. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. I'm just learning, all right, folks? There's some folks, some folks that think that because they have money, they're in charge. Because they're bro power brokers, they're in charge. Because they have a key, they think that they can be able to, to, to you know, determine whatever they want to say to you within their own context and think that they're always going to get away with it because they were given a position, but they don't understand that the position is subject to change at any time when you're dealing with a man or woman of God. Because you know what? You have the power to speak those things that be not as though they are, and if somebody is out of line, you have the power to rebuke that person out of your life. You have the power to speak to them in the spirit realm and say, you've got to go. And some of us don't take that authority. I tell you, I got a son that, you know why, he was, he's the greatest kid in the world. But a couple of times, there was a couple of kids that tried to take him out, that tried to take him down the wrong path. And me and my wife was easily could identify with that because we've been there, we've been married 39 years, I've seen her do a whole lot of bad things, so now I know what to watch out for. <laughs> so, we notice the kid. We notice when somebody that, that shouldn't have been there in his life came in and tries to infiltrate. And you know what we started to do? We identified with it right away, and we started to pray right away. And every time we pray for a kid that came into my son's life that didn't belong in the family, they were gone within a week or two. Every time they were gone within a week or two. And I come to tell you tonight that you all have that same power. You can speak those things over your husband, over your wife. If there's somebody that is getting around your children, your wife, your husband, your kids, whatever. I want you to understand that there's a power that God has given you, and he's given you access, and he's given you keys to open doors that no man can shut. He's given you the power to be able to say to the mountain, you must go in the name of Jesus. Sometimes we just got to get sick and tired of being sick and tired of the same old things going on in our lives. Come on. I mean, 
it, it, it just comes to where you got to say enough is enough. So in Matthew 28, around 1920, it says, All authority has been given unto me, not only the sweet by and by, but even the nasty and the now. All the things that have been gone. I mean, I gave it a little Hosanna to put my word in it, but we all know what it means. We've given authority. He's given us authority. I got the key, he says. I run the show. I am in charge. And I want you to know access. Access. You have access when your daddy is that lives in a kingdom that is accessible to you, that you can speak to him and you can say, Daddy, I need you now more than ever before. Open this door for me tonight, oh God. Matthew 16, 18 through 19. I'm going to build my church, and I will give my church what? The keys to the kingdom. He said it plural. You know what plural means? I give you the keys. Because I have the key. I have the key. So you know what that means? That I'm going to let you do the things you want to do. And I'm going to let you open up some doors. And when I see you about my business. And I see that you're not ashamed of the gospel. When I see that you're running after the things that I have set before you. When I see you're living your life right, I'm going to keep opening up more doors and more doors and more doors and more doors. But there's something on the other side of that also. You can't take your keys from the world and try to access a lock from the kingdom. You hear me? You can't take the keys from out there and try to come in here and try to open a door and try to have access and authority because it's not going to work. I remember me and my wife one time went on a vacation. I'll give you a perfect example. We went on a vacation. We went out to Atlanta, Georgia, and we got to go to a Creflo Dollar Church, and we went on a vacation for a week just driving and just having fun, and we enjoyed it out there, and we drove through all of Atlanta and visited a lot of places, and from there, we drove down to St. Augustine. Uh, while we were in Atlanta, we stayed in a hotel. Um, I think it was a Marriott, and, you know, we hung out in the Marriott, and then from there, we drove down to St. Augustine, which was a long drive, going from this side of the coast to the other. After we got there, we drove around, we ate there, but it didn't seem like that was the place we wanted to stay that day. So we decided, let's drive back to Orlando, Florida, because we were living in New York, and uh, we would just try to make the best of just being in Orlando. We drove down to Orlando, and when we got there, I rented the room, we got our baggage, and we got all our things together, and I think we were the next to the top floor where we were placed at, and we're carrying all our baggage, and we finally get upstairs, and we get to the door, and I take out the key from the room, and I put it in the door, and it goes click, click, and it's red. I said, hold it, hold it, hold it. I take the key out, and I take the key, and I put it in again, and it goes click, click, and it's red. It wouldn't give me no access to the lock to get into the room after I was tired and I was exhausted. And I was burnt out. And me and my wife carried everything up to that floor to get there. We could not get in the room. And I was, got a little ticked off. I'm going to tell you, I really got a little ticked off. So I leave my wife in the hallway, in a hotel, by herself. I go downstairs. I go over to the counter, kind of upset, trying to be nice. And I tell them, hey, you know what? This key doesn't work. You know, I got a little arrogant. I didn't want to, you know, lose it. I just said, the key doesn't work. And the guy looks at the key and he says, sir, but that key is not from this hotel. It was from the hotel I stayed at in Georgia. <laughs> you hear that? It was from the key from where I stayed at in Georgia. 
So I felt like a fool, put my tail between my legs, and I ran upstairs. Long story short, got in bed, didn't take my head out of the covers for a whole day because I was so upset at what I did. I'll give you another story of what happened. Those two dogs. The big German Shepherd here, rah, 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 rah. And I don't know how many of you know my little Roxy that's that small. She was sitting on this side just looking at him. The big dog looks at Roxy and says, you can't open that door. And Roxy looks at him and smiles. You can't open that door, I said. You can't even reach to that door handle. You can't open that lock. You cannot get in that door, but I can do it in dog language. <laughs> and Roxy turns to the German Shepherd and looks and, and waggles her tail and, and gives the dog a smile. And the big dog turns around and looks at Roxy and says, Roxy, I wanted to bet you, you can't open that door. Look how high that handle is and you're that short. You couldn't even get halfway up to where that door handle is to open that door. And Roxy looked at him and did her little wiggle and smiled. Long story short, Roxy says, well, go for it. And the German Shepherd rah, 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 goes running up to the door and roof, catches onto the door handle and is trying with his hands to unlock. He's done it so many times. He was one of those dogs that was trained to open the door, and he kept trying to open the door and using his mouth to open the door. Two and a half minutes later, Pastor, he finally opened the door. And he goes back over to Roxy and rah, 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 rah. you see? You ain't gonna be able to do that. You can't even reach up there. And Roxy turns around and looks at the dog and smiles and does her little, you know, like she does for us. And Roxy says, now watch this. Roxy goes up to the door. She takes her little nails. <laughs> and you know what happened? The master inside came out and opened the door. And she turned back and looked at the German shepherd, and he was dumbfounded, scratching his head, and he walked away. But I want you to know the same thing here tonight. Tonight, there may have been a German shepherd in your life that told you, you can't open the door. There have maybe have been a person in your life that told you that you're not going to make it because you're too short, you're too tall, you're too fat, you're too ugly, you, 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 don't, you don't have no education, whatever it may be. I need you to understand tonight who is your daddy? Who is your daddy? Who holds the key? to the door that you want to get into. See, some of you think that you might have to huff and puff and knock the door down. Some of you may think that maybe praying for a month or a week or not understanding that you have access right now, but you're so holy that you got to pray for a year before you think that God is going to be able to do it for you. Some of you may not have your kid today and you're praying that the Lord will restore your family and give you your kids back. Some of you may have a husband that is overseas in the military and you only haven't seen him in a year. Some of you may have a spouse that's in jail and you don't know when they're coming out again and you don't know what you're going to do to be able to make it. need you to understand tonight who holds the key who holds the key 
in your life? Who is the, has the miracle working power to be able to say to that mountain, you gots to go, you gots to go. Some of you got to start speaking to the mountain and tell the mountain it's got to go. There were two guys once that heard that they, were, they had a contest going on in Colorado and that they were trying to get these wolves out of you know, Colorado because it was getting infested with these wolves that were dangerous that would kill animals and chase people and all kind of things. And so they put a bounty out on those wolves and they said, you know what? We're going to pay $5,000 for every wolf that you could catch. We'll give you $5,000 for each one of them. And two brothers got together and they said, let's go out there. And they loaded up their cars with everything that they needed. And they got out there finally. And it was in the middle of the night. It was pitch black. And they pulled out a tent out of their car. And they pitched the tent where they were. And, and they unloaded their cars into the tent. And, and they put their food into the tent. And, and they got together. And they got cozy. And they said, well, let's get some rest tonight. Because tomorrow we're going to catch some wolves. Next morning, they both wake up. One brother opens up the zipper from the tent and sticks his head out. And when he looks around, he sees 50 wolves outside of the tent. Bloodshot red eyes, saliva coming out of their mouth. I mean, they look like they were getting ready to tear something up. And he closed the zipper right back down on that tent. And he went over to his brother and he wakes up. He's shaking his brother. Jeb, Jeb, wake up. Jeb, Jeb, wake up. Wake up, Jeb. Finally, he wakes up. And he tells his brother, hey, Jeb, we won. Jeb says, what do you mean? We won. He says, what are you talking about? He says, come here. Let me open the zipper of the tent. I want you to look out. We got 50 wolves around our tent here today. And his brother looked at him and couldn't understand that the way this man was looking at it, he had changed his perspective on the way he seen what was going on around him and he already declared the victory, even though he hadn't shot one wolf. Not even one. All 50 of them were just hanging out around his tent. And I come to tell you tonight, the same thing in your life. You know what? It doesn't matter what it looks like when you open that door. When you zip open that tent and you stick your head out. You know what matters? What matters is the way you see things. Because you know what? What happened last night doesn't have to happen tomorrow morning anymore if you decided to follow Jesus, if you decided to let go and let God, you would be able to have eyes just like that man had. Eyes that were transformed. A heart that was changed. A life that says, you know what, I trust the daddy that I serve. And if there's anyone in this house that this word has spoken to tonight, I tell you tonight, come quickly. Come forward right now in the name of Jesus. Come, 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 come. Come quickly right here, right now. The Lord is telling me to just stop this right here and let's just go from right here. Come quickly. Come quickly. If it's you that the Lord has the key, the Lord wants you to come tonight with what you have and come in agreement with him that he can open up any door in your life. He can transform you from whatever you're going to into that Zoe lifestyle that he's promised for you in his word. Come. Come right now.